Hi, here on the workbench today is a lead time 12 volts, 100 amp hours lithium iron phosphate battery. Lead time sent in this battery for me to do a review. I will leave a link in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. In this video, we'll verify the battery's claimed specifications. As I mentioned in my previous battery review videos, cycle life and long term reliability are some of the key specifications of a rechargeable battery. Obviously, I won't be able to test the long term performance and verify these specifications in this video, but the specifications given are similar to other competitors' products, so I will give them the benefit of the doubt. I will be using this battery regularly, and if I run into any problems, I will definitely report back. Lead Time is a fairly well known brand in the lithium battery industry. They offer different sized LFP batteries, inverters, and accessories. The battery I have here is Lead Time's standard group 31 12 volts 100 amp hours battery. Lead Time also has other 100 amp hours batteries, and you can check them out on their website. The main differences among these different 100 amp hours batteries are the group size and the BMS used. This battery I have here can sustain a maximum charging and discharging current of 100 amps and has a peak discharge current of 280 amps. I had charged up the battery using the recommended 0.2C or 20 amps charging current. The cutoff voltage was set at 14.5 volts. During the charging cycle, the battery stayed pretty cool. Of course, the 20 amps charging current is quite modest, and I was not expecting any issue. To test the battery capacity, I chose the standard 0.1C discharge rate, which is 10 amps, using my electronic loads battery testing feature. One benefit of an LFP battery is that the discharge curve is fairly flat compared to other battery chemistries. So the terminal voltage does not drop significantly until the very end of the discharging cycle, as you can see in the video I captured earlier here. From my discharging test, I managed to get 102.65 amp hours from the battery, which is slightly higher than the rated 100 amp hours capacity. For the discharging test, the cutoff voltage was set to 9.5 volts at the electronic load side. And while the test was running, I measured the voltage drop across wires, which was just above 1 volt. So in theory, I probably could squeeze out a little bit more, maybe a couple more amp hours from the battery, as 10.5 volts is still above the minimum terminal voltage. Anyway, the point I was trying to make here is that the battery exceeded its rated capacity. At 0.1C discharge rate, the battery stayed pretty cool, as you can see from the thermal images captured during the capacity test. The battery terminals got a little bit warm, and that was mainly due to the fact the cable I used was not quite rated for 20 amps. If you look carefully, you can see a few warmer spots other than the battery terminal, and I suspect those are probably radiated from the active components on the BMS inside the battery. After the discharge test, I have charged up the battery again. Now let's verify the battery's internal resistance with an internal resistance tester. According to the specifications, the internal resistance should be less than 40 milliohms. I'm going to use a couple of meters to test just to verify the results. The first one is this two top IR502. Let's take a look here. Now, these clips are a little bit on the smaller side, so I actually have to hold it because I can see that it's not going to be big enough for the terminals here. So let me press on it. Hopefully, you can still see the reading here. So we're measuring right around 23, 24 milliohms. So let's remember that number, and we're going to verify with another meter. The second meter I'm going to use to verify the result with is a Fernersi HRM10. So let me put it in place here, and I probably have to hold the probes as well. And you can see we're reading roughly 27 milliohms, so which is in the same ballpark as what we measured before. According to the specifications, the battery can sustain a 100 amps discharging current continuously. So let's actually verify that. And here is the setup for the test. I have hooked up a inverter, and instead of powering the heaters directly from the inverter, I'm using a variac, so I can change the output power precisely so that the current draw would be 100 amps. The heater I'm using is rated for 1500 watts, so we'll have quite a bit of headroom here. And here we have a clamp meter measuring the current draw from the battery. 
So let's power on the inverter. And currently we're in standby. So now let's increase the variac output. And you can see the heater is on now. So we're drawing right now 70 amps, 90 amps. And right now we're at 100 amps, so let's actually lower it a little bit. And now we'll let it run for about 5 minutes. And I had let it run for about 8 minutes now. I did have to adjust the voltage once in a while so that the output remains at roughly 100 amps. Now let's take a look at the thermal profile of the battery here. And by the way, I will take some pictures. We will see later. As you can see, we do have a hot spot in the front here, but that's not anything to be concerned about as it's only about 34, 35 degrees. You can see here, so that's not an issue. And similarly, on the top here, you can see we also have a few hot spots. And you can kind of see the battery, I think those dark spots are two of the cells that's in the battery here. Anyway, so you can see this is one of the hot spot, and the other hot spot is right there. So these are definitely from the BMS inside the battery. So we just verified that the BMS is indeed able to handle 100 amps of continuous current. According to the manual, the maximum current the BMS can handle is 280 amps, which is pulsed no longer than 5 seconds. So let's actually verify that. To do the test, I'm going to use my electric drill. And if you remember, that drill has an inrush current higher than 150 amps. So the inrush current of the drill combined with the 100 amps continuous current draw from the electric heater should put the maximum current right around the limit. So let me change the setup a little bit. And because I don't have a single inverter to handle the combined load, I'm going to use two inverters instead. So let me power the inverters on, and let's take a look. So now let's first make sure that we're drawing 100 amps. And I will let that reading stabilize before I start the drill here. And that's good enough. So here's the drill. And you can see that, no problem at all. Let's uh, increase the output voltage a little bit. So we're back to 100 amps, roughly. And let's try the draw again. And you can see that no problem at all. So you can see here we have no issue with the peak current load from the battery. From my testing so far today, this lead time 100 amp hours LFP battery performed pretty well. We were able to confirm that it met the capacity and maximum current ratings. And as I mentioned, I will report back if I find any long term performance issues. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier that with LFP battery chemistry, you should not attempt to charge the battery when the battery temperature is below freezing. Doing so will prevent the lithium ions from properly being absorbed by the anode and cause lithium plating and possibly damage the battery structure. You can, however, safely discharge the battery at a much lower temperature, typically down to minus 20 degrees Celsius or minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Lead time does offer batteries with low temperature cutout protection, and some even have heaters built in. 
make sure you select the appropriate type for your usage scenarios. Anyway, I hope you find this video informative. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.